Hi YouTubers, welcome back to Vintage Fashion Hat Chat. I'm Norma Shepard, the director of the Mobile Millinery Museum and the author of five books on vintage fashion, including 1,000 hats. And you are seeing me today so much happier than I've been for weeks. So on a personal note, I just want to say I'm so happy to be at this date on the calendar because for weeks I had dreaded September 21st where I had some um, dental uh, work <laughs> to be done. And with uh, my lupus concerns and my PTSD, this is something that just really ramped up my anxiety. And I spent just about every day for weeks, you know, one day closer, one day closer, still trying to put it out of my mind, trying to, you know, suppress my anxiety. And uh, the work was done. I was a brave girl. Um, everything was great. Um, a lot of my PTSD has to do with um, dental trauma of the past. So I just want to make it clear that the dentist I have now is fantastic. I, I completely trust him. I have no fear. It's just if any of you do deal with anxiety or PTSD, you know, you, you can't control it. Um, anyway, so that is over with and I'm just healing. I do have to go back in three weeks for more. And um, I'm confident that I will be even better uh, mentally and emotionally prepared for the next time because this went so well. So that out of the way, I, I am so happy. Of course, um, new vintage jewelry also makes me happy. This is a lovely um, Monet piece in perfect condition that I picked up recently on Etsy. So now to get to the topic at hand. Today I want to talk about tilt hats, aka doll hats. And if you're unfamiliar with the term uh, doll hats or you're unfamiliar with um, millinery history, vintage hats, uh, the term doll hat really does not refer to a little hat made for a doll, although technically speaking that is perfectly descriptive of that. But doll hats, uh, that was a style in the 1930s, 1940s, little tilt hats, because they were so diminutive, um, that was a little nickname that they had. Now the one I'm wearing is Black Milan Straw, beautifully done, you know, uh, sewn in concentric circles as I often say. Think of the workmanship that went into this. This is banded in a wide, um, just a gorgeous wide ribbon. There's a ribbon bow at the back and of course the chignon strap secures it. It's not going to move. It's perfect. So happy, happy, happy. This one is made from beaver felt. It's a little uh, bumper piece. Look how it tilts over the brow. So cute. Uh, bows, of course, were a really um, typical trim, typical motif uh, during this uh, era, and they were often self-fabric. Um, this one, of course, is felt, and then we have the grain ribbon band, chignon strap, and it is twist twisted on the other side, but you can see uh, how this would go over your hair. And then at the back on this one, we have uh, a simulation of a bow. And nicely, there's a little elastic in the center, so uh, you can adjust the fit. So that's that one. Now, here's a similar one. Similar, of course, but different. This um, tilt or doll hat was a prevailing style for the late 30s, uh, early 1940s. But, of course, nobody wanted to have the same hat as someone else. So they're always a wee bit different. Really in love with the self-fabric felt bow on this with its um, vertical extension of the tail of the bow. And of course we know that a lot of the verticality of the hats during the Second World War had to do with uh, confidence, morale boosting. Uh, many of these were called victory hats. Just a nice little bit of shine on the ribbon um, makes this hat sort of uh, appropriate even, even for evening or late in the day. Okay, so the next one is also felt. This time it's a wool felt. It has these little uh, loops on the side under which um, a wonderful spray of rooster tail feathers has been tucked just on the one side. Now this one does not have a chignon strap and uh, it may have uh, may have been removed or perhaps this hat originally was um, just held with um, 
with pins. So here's another one. A uh, beautiful Milan straw, gorgeous purple color. The chenille strap on this one is a folded grow grain. And there weren't often, um, purple wasn't an easy sell, uh, late 1930s, early 1940s. Um, I might have thought that it was a um, custom hat, but then the label is marked with the size, which leads me to think differently. And I believe that reads Everlade. So another cute little tilt, little tilt, little doll hat. Would have sat like this, this little feather. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is stunning. Stunning. This hat is not labeled and it is formed on a buckram. Formed on a buckram. So this one, oh. This one is gorgeous. Nice verticality, a little bit of, you know, diagonal effect here uh, done with a wire on the crown and the brim. Grow grain, grow grain chignon strap, no label, but just a real beauty, especially with this little, um, little rhinestone leaf pin. <laughs> So those are the tilt slash doll hats I have to show you today. Um, you will see a lot of these different styles uh, in the old movies and I will link to a couple of videos I've done matching up hats we have in the archives with similar styles in some old movies. Uh, so feel free to click on those. Um, also, you know the drill, um, like, share, subscribe and um, We'll see you again. In the meantime, have a happy day. I know I will.